Oh, look at it all. It's all full of alluvium. Crap. You know what they call the swimming pool in France, don't you? No. La piscine. La piscine in the cabin. Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here on a beautiful hot day here in Lincolnshire. And on such a warm day as today, I can think of nothing better to do than go for a dip in a swimming pool, which is what I have got at the moment in the center of my Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here on a beautiful summer's day here in Lincolnshire. It's that warm that I've decided I need to take a dip. However, I didn't think that I'd be taking a dip in the swimming pool that was in my Smart 451 footwells this morning. Dad and I yesterday had a look at the car as we'd been sent an OBD scanner to test and that video is coming to the channel very soon. As we were doing so, scrambling around in footwells, we noticed there was about half inch of water in the passenger and driver's side footwell and we have no idea where it's coming from. In this video then we will try and diagnose where all the water's coming from because the last thing I want is water inside my smart car. First port of call is going to be get the floor mats out. Uh, remember I spent a lot of money on some night orange floor mats. Well now they're very wet. Ugh. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Are you going for a dip in my smart car? No, mate. Pool? No, 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 no. I'm just going to sit inside and let it steam me. Yes. Um, we noticed yesterday then, as said in the intro, that there is some water in the uh, footwells as we were testing our new OBD reader. And unusually, it's in both the passenger it and is, the driver's yeah. side. What I'm going to do is just come around here and show the good people the water. Because it is actually quite wet, isn't it? It is, it is, it is, it is, it is. Uh, let's have a look in here. Now you can see it in there. All that foam's wet through. All dude. the foam on the bottom of the carpet. And yeah, look, there it is. There's all the water, and it's exactly the same on the passenger side. Uh, what are we thinking? I'm hoping it's just the blinking air conditioning drain. Ah, okay. So we don't think it's coming in through the, the windows or anything like that. Well, we see, we don't know. We've never looked to see if it's been wet, have we? I suppose if it was coming in through if, the windows, well, it hadn't been chucking it down with rain lately, has no, it? No, and there would be water. Surely, we would see it down the window itself and on the plastic. So you've done some research on the internet. Only very quickly. What's it? What's it showed us? It might be the air conditioning drain. Okay. We need to look. So it could be a plenum drain. Probably. Yeah. But could... I think this time of the year it's more than likely going to be in there. But it is actually dripping a little bit on the floor. Right. So whether it's leaking up, we don't know. We're going so to have a look. How are we going to do it? Take the seats and everything out? Not or? first. We're going to just have a look first. Okay. Take... Right. Let me get sorted. Yeah. We can get, uh, get the carpet peeled back and have yeah. a look. I must admit it's very interesting that the aircon on that has potentially caused a problem because the aircon on the Armstrong Sidley has never leaked, has it? <laughs> you know what I'm on about, don't you? I, do, I kind of know. But you so, know how your fridge gets, make, makes water on the... Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. So it has a, con has a condenser, doesn't it? And uh, well, it has can... a drain, and the liquid drains out. I would have thought the air con... It's the evaporator, that is. Condenser. It's the evaporator, which is the evaporator drain tube. It's, it's... But why is it in the cabin? Because if it's not... Well, that's what's stressing me out, that we're actually getting some on the floor. If you're not getting it on the floor, it's normally because it's leaking inside. Right. But it's a normal thing that happens to cars, so... OK, so you're not panicking. It's not my flipping car. <laughs> <laughs> so you've done some research on the internet. Where does it actually go? Where? Somewhere near the battery, it is. Come on, then. So out we come. This is my cup holder. I can clean that while we're there. Put that to one side. Two-man job. CD oh. rack, take that out the way. There's no need to, but I'm going to whip that out of the way. What's that? A centre bit. Yeah. Whip it out of the way. I've got so, obviously, with the increased heat, I have been using this the aircon quite though, a lot. I reckon you might have noticed it if it had been leaking in. I know what we need to do. Need. What's that? Give it a good looking at. Yeah. So we've got that out. That was four torque screws. It's, just, it's, it's a struggle to get all this lot out. Now we can see. We're just going to leave that hung there. Aha! 
So we're into the battery area, which has been damaged in its life. But is it, oh, it's all soaking wet. It wasn't soaking wet before, was it? There it is, all in there. This is the pipe. Right, let's have a look at the pipe, just a second. People tell me the pipe partially blocks. Where is the pipe? Just put your finger on it again. If that pipe's partially blocked. Can you see what I'm touching? I can't. Oh, there's a pipe. Look. Oh, oh yes, now I can see it, yes. That's the evaporator drain tube. Hmm. No. Does it feel wet? No, I would expected that to feel wet there. Let's look for evidence. Oh, you know what we can use? We've done with well can. The inspection camera. Yeah. Great. Oh, that's just lovely. Can you see out with your phone? I can see that it's soaked. Oh, yeah. We know about that. Here's a theory. Fire away, son. The interior of the car is stepped. So... It could be coming in from the back. That's what I'm thinking. Is it coming in from the back? We can ask as many questions as we like, but we need to look first. Yes, I understand. Well, you're using your new little... We can, we can say many words as we like, but it's not going to do any good without cracking on and having a look at the damn thing. <laughs> What's that? Got water coming out of the heater. Oh, we've got w w out the heater? Yes, that's where it's coming from, the air conditioning. Oh, excellent. So we found the source of the problem. Right, give us the old camera load, mate. That's oh, excellent. Yes, it's not coping, was it? Excellent. So we found the source. We've got water coming out yeah. of the bottom of the heater. We've got the endoscope on, and I'll hopefully try and show you via that. Well, I can certainly see... Can you see that drip of water? Some water there, yeah. That's on my finger. Excellent. So, so that is like a braided hose, is it? Could yeah. be the hose. That's just a wiring harness, it's dripping. Oh, you turn it off. So we've got a theory that the drain tube is partially blocked. If only we had an endoscope. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, we're going to stick the endoscope down the drain tube. What do you think it could be blocked with? Alluvium. And stuff. Hey, right, hang on, let's be... go. Right, I'm going to turn this on. Turn it, give us some light first then. Yeah. Hang on. I'm going to get in the car. Right. Right, I'm sticking it down. Go. We're looking good so far. We're looking good so far. Looking good so it's far. There's a flap thing at the end and it gets crap behind ah. it. Ah. Looking good so far. Can't go any further. Yeah, I think you've come up to a bend. Oh, a bend. <laughs> An awful feeling. Mm -hmm. But the pipe doesn't go through the floor like it should. We've decided that Let's we're going to have to take the battery out. Yep. I know to get at the end, you have to go underneath and take the under tray off. Oh, we don't like doing that. But what they normally have, they have a little flap on the end like that. Like what? Oh, right. Like a little rubber flap. Oh, I see, like a... Like a... And it fills up with alluvium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, just like a plenum drain in a Rover 75. You've got it, Gromit. That was a horrible job, getting the battery out of there, because, well, it's <laughs> very big in comparison to the gap. The good news is there is a little swimming pool in there as well. That's where the water's going. That's why we're getting wet. Uh, surprisingly, we've not obviously shorted the car out. It's a big old battery, that one is. Someone's put a big battery in well, there. It needs it for that stop-start job up, doesn't it? We've removed the elbow. Oh, look at it all. It's all full of... Alluvium. Crap. Is that what's causing us a problem? Yeah, this is. So that is blocked up. We'll unblock that, put it all back together. Get the wet and dry vac out, hoover it out. Jobs are good in. I'm glad that it was that. <sighs> Not wasting no time, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Just take that, should I take that thing out? What, from the battery? The, the, to let it start draining. Is there a grommet there, is it? Yeah, yeah pull the grommet out, grommet. Yeah, but there's a the screwdriver's not there. I've got a screwdriver here for you. That's the one. Here you are. Don't drop it through. Ah! 
There goes the water. Ta-da! So here's the it's theory not then. It's not unusual. Who's, mm. who's seen that? Tom Jones. Tom Jones, isn't it? Look. Oh. It's What's like all the stuff, that then? It's like the stuff to get in your plug hole and yeah. your sand basin. It's, so that's all it's, stuck in there. It's a spit and whiskers and anything yeah. else you put down your plug hole. Eee. Nice. Spit and whiskers. So that has blocked. Could you tell me what time it is, please? Uh, it's half eleven. Right here. So what we'll do... If you... Show us that. Just show us that thing. Hold it up to the camera. This way. It's a normal thing on cars, John. It's not earth shattering. No, thank you. I've got my thumbnail now, you see. It's not earth shattering. Are we going to take the seats out and take the carpet out so it dries? Yeah. Good. I think that's a good idea. For some reason, the bolts that hold the seat in place at the back are a different size to the front. Well, the, the head, anyway. What's that all about? Germans. I'm going to grab this. Yeah. I'm going to lift the bottom. Yeah? Just watch that arse end now. Right. Uh -huh. I've got it. You got it? I've got it. I'm going to turn it that no, way. No, you're going to let go of it. You've got the... I've yeah. got the seat. You're well, going to let go of it you're that. watching me. Out she comes. Two people fighting against one another. Yeah, no, I understand. Put the seat down. That's it, van mode. Bleeding Nora! Sorry, I'm going to stop you. Look at the size of that bug underneath your... Um, mirror on there. Don't touch it. Bleeding Jesus! It's a bug. Big bug. What the bloody hell is that? It's just a dead bug. It's a dead bug. So we've got that seat out of the car. Are you taking that bar out now, eh? Got to do it. Get your carpet out. Ah, oh, fair enough. Oh, what's that? It's a thing. It's a yaw sensor, if I remember rightly. It's a yaw sensor. Oh, is it? That's something to do with your stop start gubbins. Right, you? we'll leave that alone. Yeah. Ready for my comedy now? Go on, quick. What do they call, or oh, you know what they call the swimming pool in France, don't you? No. La piscine. La piscine in the cabin. Yeah. Out comes the centre console. And it doesn't come out though. Because my knob's in the way. How does my knob come off? You need to get your knob off. Out comes the driver's side seat. Yeah. Right, so out come the seats. Out are both the seats. That was uh, not as easy as I expected it to be, actually, because <laughs> it's quite a, uh, quite a tight gap. OK, so we're at a stage now where both the seats are out, the centre console is out, and I can uh, start to get, or we can start to get the, uh, the carpets out. What I'm currently doing is hoovering out the floor pan to get the excess water out, but I'm still going to have to take that carpet out because it is sodden. It's so wet. And you can see at this point just how sodden the carpet in the passenger footwell is. I've got it sort of up and over upon itself, but look at that drenched <laughs> we're not wasting our time <laughs> and so the carpet is out uh, dad's refitting the drain vent after unblocking it and we've got the carpet drip drying on the washing line you can see still the amount of water that's coming out of there and uh, this side this is the passenger side. You can see just how sodden it is. And I've had a good go on that with the, uh, with the wet vac. So it'll have a good old dry out. I'm glad we spotted that when we did because there are computers inside the passenger footwell, which are here. And there's a yaw sensor there. And a, we think that computer controls the um, stop-start technology. 
So the fact that we've spotted that is a good thing. That could have been an expensive repair. Right, so the battery is back in. Uh, whilst we let the interior all dry out, we're gonna uh, have a cup of tea. Cup of tea over, how was your cup of tea? <laughs> On this hot day. Um, we've got the inside all dry. We've got it all sort of wired back up. We are gonna try it, I'm guessing. Yeah, run it up, mate. Just run it up, run the aircon up, make sure that it's- As I say, we'll chuck an airbag fault up, but I reckon we can clear that with that tool. And make sure it's not leaking, because the last thing we want to do is put it all back together and then find that we've not solved it. So I'll grab the keys, we'll fire it up. Yeah. Well, the good news is it started up. Interestingly, the eco mode did not appear. Let's try pressing the eco button on and on. Yeah, it messes about after you've had the battery off. Right, it's not working at the moment, the stop start, which is not a problem. The aircon's on and blasting away. We'll soon find out if we get a leak. I've discovered that if uh, I sit in the smart car without any seats in, I've actually got quite a lot of space. The mirror is out. How's it looking? Well, we've not got no dribblings yet, which is bad. Right, the aircon's been running for what, 10 minutes? How are we looking? Any leaks? Not inside, there is underneath though. Oh, let's have a look. Aha! That water coming out is a good sign, right? Yeah, switch her off then, mate. Take the keys out, which will start have ignition on then. So, we've had the aircon on, we yeah. can see that it's dropping out of the bottom of the car. Well, we, we did actually find something wrong. We, we found that it was all gunked up. Are you draining. confident that you've fixed it? It wasn't draining fast enough, was it? It wasn't draining bloody fast enough, but it is now. Confident? The ring of confidence. Now we can upgrade everything else that we've uncovered. For example, the underfloor subwoofer. Now we know that the wiring's in there, we can stick one of them in there. All sorts of Have stuff. Have you ever heard a saying? What's the saying? Number of things given, zero. Oh. <laughs> Regard a mon visage. Is that something to do with ducks? Number of ducks given? Yeah. How many ducks have you got? In those days I gave more ducks. <laughs> Good. I think we've fixed the problem. Uh, I don't think subwoofers are high on my list of priorities. No? What is on your list of priorities for this car? Putting it back together. Putting it back together so you can pick Mrs. JC up from work. Yeah. We fixed it. We found out what was wrong with it. We found the problem. I've trimmed the end of the thing to make it so it can't block up so easy. Ridiculous question. Could we have unblocked that from underneath the car? Yes. <laughs> well, we couldn't have dried the bugger out, could we? No, that's true. Right, well, we'll get it drying in the sun and then back together and back on the road. Don't tell Dad, I've just bought a subwoofer. Uh, it's cost £70, but I think it'll be worth it. Comment down below for subwoofer fund. It's a wee bit amateur hour, what we've just done. Heath Robinson. Don't blame me, I'm not I involved. Think, is the term I would use. So here, right Don't here, is a piece of foam uh, that is basically where you put your left foot when you're travelling in the car and not using it. And, well, it was missing. Uh, or well, half of it was missing, so this piece is here, this piece was missing. I've used some Kingspan, sort of, what would you class it as? Insulation, insulation board, board, really. Board, yes, insulation is. here, I've measured it against the old stuff and I've sort of stuck it in with no nails and some gaffer tape. Uh, it's not a professional job, but you'll never see it. And actually now I won't be uh, spongy when I'm trying to put my left foot uh, on Look the, what you've uh, done to me, Gress. Bit, yeah, I've got. Oh, you've got King Span and no nonsense <laughs> all over. Apologies, but we're doing a good enough job there. And this is nearly, very nearly, uh, dry now. It's still, in fact, there's still bits in it. Hey, what I'm going to do is uh, have a look in the wet and dry vac. See how much water we actually got out of there. 
And uh, quite a lot. Oh, you've uh, you've uh, done some modification to this. What have you done here? Looks like you finished the London Marathon. Or are you going into space? <laughs> no, mate. I'm in, I'm insulating you from EMF. Oh, what's EMF? Electromagnetic frequencies. Right, shall we put it back together? Yes. Let's get this put back together. When I'm on the internet, I put a tin foil hat on. Oh, right. Why is that? To save anybody contacting my brain over the internet. Chemtrails. Chemtrails. <laughs> right, let's get this in the, in the car then. What's the best way of doing this? Carry it over here and we'll chuck it in. Oh, good. Thanks for clarifying that. Right, here we go. I've got the carpet. I'm going to stick it in the car. Hang on a minute. Oh, there's the driver's side. You've got that side. Yes, Look. mate, I have. Right. Now, we need to put the wires through. Yeah. And that needs to go around through there. Right. Well, it's much drier now, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's not 100%, but it's be best we can do in the time available. Right, so the carpet is in situ. We've got the wiring in place. How's it looking? Grubby. Yeah, I'm going to give it a hoover out, I think. Yep. You're going to come put the pedal in this side, and I'll hoover out yon side, eh? OK, brother. So when I bought the car, somebody had drilled a hole in the uh, centre console for some reason. Uh, probably to put a cable through or some, some sort of charging cable. Uh, it's a bit rough, to be honest with you, so what we're going to do is put a blanking plug in there. We've got some blanking plugs, it needs drilling a little bit bigger, yeah. um, and then we'll put the plug oh, in there. Oh, that's the way to do it, Gromit. Ta-da! That looks better, doesn't it? Crack it on, Gromit. Less rough than it did. Um, just, can you just show us the hole saw you used to drill that? Oh, nice. Where's that from? Little... There you go. Things are slowly coming back together. I've put the centre console back in. Here, uh, Dad is putting in uh, this piece of trim here. I've also put this bar back in for the seats. And now it's time to put the seats back in. In it goes. That one went in easier than it came out. In goes the seat belts. Driver seat's back in. Seat belts on. Passenger seat is going in, being tightened down. Uh, we have used an OBD reader to check the car using the OBD port. Sadly, my phone battery uh, and my phone overheated, so I couldn't show you that bit. But uh, there were no fault codes, which is good news. Uh, so we haven't got to solve any problems with the fault code reader. We were using the new King Bolin uh, fault code reader that we've been sent to review. A review is coming to the channel uh, in a separate video, but... Um, what do you reckon to the King Bowling so far? <laughs> Noisy. It's very nice. It's good, isn't it? I've had it on the Hyundai. You've had it on the Hyundai, we've yeah. used it on this. I haven't had uh, it on the Nissan yet. Not had it on the Nissan. <laughs> and it doesn't work on the Peugeot 406, but uh, so far, so good with the King Bowling. So um, we've got a good, good things to say about it. Uh, passenger seat in now? Nearly. Lovely. I'll uh, get the... Um, Get the seats, uh, not the seats, the floor mats, important things. And then we'll uh, make sure it runs properly. You're and then I think while we're here, should we check the oil? That's a jolly good idea, Grom. We've, we've not checked the oil on it uh, since I've topped it up, so uh, we'll check the oil as well. But considering uh, this is what we look, well, considering we had all the interior out about an hour ago, uh, it's nice and dry now and hopefully solved the problem. Well, the good news is we've just checked the uh, dipstick, the oil. It's not used any oil in the past six months or 7,000 miles, which is uh, a Christmas miracle, really. For a spare car. There it is, all back together. Right, well, <laughs> it's all back together. We're packing the tools away. How do you feel that went? Wasn't a job on the books that wasn't. No, it wasn't something we planned on doing. No. Uh, I'm glad we spotted that leak yesterday, though. I'm glad you did uh, because it, it made my day. Oh uh, well, yeah, it could have got to the point where it damaged something yeah. electrically under the seat there. Yeah. Um, that was a big job actually. Transmission that... control module, isn't it? Yeah. That's taken us all day. That has. Well, from about half ten till four o'clock. Uh, I'm glad we took the carpet out to dry it off. 
as opposed to just fix Ooh, the leak. A message. Actually, finding the leak and fixing it was not a major issue, but getting it, um, getting it all sorted out was. Did you know your mum is waiting? What, to be picked up? No. 12-12. Oh, right, OK. Oh, good. Well, she's been... <laughs> Hang on a minute, you got that message at quarter past 12 and it's now four o'clock? I haven't looked at my phone. No. OK. Um, happy with that job? Oh, I'm over the blinking moon, son. That would have been a that would have been a big job at a smart dealership, wouldn't it? Oh, I think that would have spoilt your holiday plans. That uh, that would have probably you're, have... you're spending money for your holidays that are gone. Do you think they'd have charged you for a new carpet? They'd have sold you a new carpet, wouldn't they? Anyway, um, good. Thanks for your help. I enjoyed that. What's next on the smart? You're going to clear off for a week and do some work. We're going to fit the subwoofer. Oh, uh, that's a quick job. Oh, yes. Well, there it is then. The Smart 451 swimming pool is closed for business. I'm glad that we spotted that yesterday and I'm glad that we've, well, not glad, but I'm happy that we've done some uh, impromptu work on the 451 eradicating that water because it would have only got worse and I'm glad that it didn't manage to get so full that it's crept up into the electronics on the passenger side. Loads more stuff to come with the Smart Night Orange, including a 10,000 mile update because I've had the car since April now and in October we're going to be doing a six month on down the line how am I getting on with it? It is actually now my daily driver and I'm loving it. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, thumbs up please. Until next time, have a great day. Whatever you're getting up to, goodbye. If you've enjoyed today's video, I have selected another one for you right here. Give it a click and let me know what you think. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. The button is there and don't forget to ring the bell icon to keep up to date with what we're doing.